In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn about friction. We will take a look at the various types of frictions, dry friction, the laws of friction, and the basic terms in friction. What is friction? Whenever a tendency exists for motion of one body with respect to another body, involving rubbing of surfaces in contact, frictional forces are developed between the surfaces in contact which always act in a direction to oppose motion. In simple words, friction is the resistance to motion of one body over another body. The main types of friction are as follows. Dry friction occurs when unlubricated surfaces of two rigid bodies are in contact under a tendency of rubbing of surfaces. This type of friction is also called as column friction. A ball rolling on the ground is an ideal example of dry friction. In our course, we will only be studying about dry friction. Fluid friction occurs when an object moves through a fluid, meaning either a liquid or gas. Examples of fluid friction are skydiving and swimming. Fluid friction is studied in detail under fluid mechanics and will not be discussed further in our course. Internal friction is the force resisting motion between the elements making up a solid material. In simple words, it is the motion resisting force between the surfaces of particles making up a body. Further, friction can also be divided into the following types on the type of contact between surfaces. Sliding friction. This type of friction is observed when there is a sliding contact between two surfaces. It is defined as the opposing force that comes into play when one body is actually sliding over the surface of another body. For example, when a small kid tries to slide down on a park slide, the opposing force is called sliding friction. Rolling friction. It is defined as the opposing force that comes into play when one body is actually rolling over the surface of another body, that is something with wheels or that is circular like a ball. For example, when riding a motorcycle, rolling friction is observed. In our course, we will only be dealing with the effects of dry friction with sliding contact. We will now illustrate the mechanism of dry friction with the aid of a very simple example. Consider a mouse is being chased by a cat. In order to hide from the cat, the mouse hides behind a sofa. The sofa has weight W and is resting on a horizontal surface. We assume that the contacting surfaces have some roughness. A view of the irregularities of the mating surfaces help us to visualize the mechanical action of friction. On watching the mouse go behind the sofa, the cat now starts pushing the sofa with a horizontal force. This horizontal force P continuously increases from zero to a value sufficient to move the sofa and give it an appreciable velocity. The free body diagram of the sofa for any value of applied force, P, is shown where the tangential friction force exerted by the plane on the block is labelled F. This friction force acting on the body will always be in a direction to oppose motion. There is a normal force N which is in this case equals to W. When P is zero, equilibrium requires that there be no friction force. As P is increased, the friction force must be equal and opposite to the applied force P, as long as the sofa does not slip. During this period, the sofa is in equilibrium, and all forces acting on the sofa must satisfy the equilibrium equations. Finally, we reach a value of P, which causes the sofa to slip and to move in the direction of the applied force. At this same time, the friction force decreases slightly and abruptly, it then remains essentially constant as the applied force increases. The region in the graph till the point of slippage or impending motion is called the range of static friction. This friction force may have any value from zero to the maximum value. For a given pair of mating surfaces, the example shows that this maximum value of static friction F max is equal to the product of the coefficient of static friction and normal force N. Coefficient of the static friction is the ratio of the limiting frictional force F max and normal reaction N. 
after slippage occurs, a condition of kinetic friction accompanies the motion. Kinetic frictional force is less than the maximum static friction force. The kinetic friction force Fk is equal to the product of the coefficient of kinetic friction and normal force N. Coefficient of kinetic friction is the ratio of the kinetic frictional force Fk and the normal reaction N. Since Fk is less than Fmax, coefficient of kinetic friction is always less than coefficient of static friction. For example, the approximate value of coefficient of static friction mu s between rubber and concrete ranges between 0.6 to 0.85. The corresponding coefficient of kinetic friction mu k is around 0.45 to 0.6. The laws of friction are as follows. When two bodies are in contact, the frictional force is always tangential to the contact surface and acts opposite to the direction of impending motion. Also, the frictional force is proportional and perpendicular to the normal force N. The value of frictional force increases as the applied force increases till it reaches the limiting value Fmax. During this period, the bodies are in equilibrium and the force of friction is just sufficient to prevent motion. At the limiting stage, the body is on the verge of motion. The ratio of limiting frictional force Fmax and normal reaction N is a constant and it is called as coefficient of static friction. For bodies in motion, the frictional force developed, that is kinetic frictional force Fk, is less than the maximum static friction force Fmax. The ratio of kinetic frictional force Fk and normal reaction N is a constant and it is called as coefficient of kinetic friction. The coefficient of static friction is slightly greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Frictional force depends upon the nature of the surfaces in contact. For example, consider a wooden sofa is being pushed over a wooden surface. The frictional force generated acts against the direction of motion. The coefficient of friction is around 0.25 to 0.4. Now consider the same wooden sofa is being pushed over a concrete surface. The frictional force generated in this case is more. As the coefficient of friction in this case is about 0.65 to 0.8, this is because the nature of surfaces in contact is different. Now let's take a look at the basic terms of friction. Angle of friction. The angle made by the resultant of the limiting frictional force Fmax and the normal reaction N with the normal reaction is called as the angle of friction. Consider a block of weight W on a horizontal surface. An applied force P is acting on the block as shown in the figure. Let N be the normal reaction. If the block is on the verge of impending motion, the frictional force Fmax will be acting on the block as shown. Let R be the resultant of Fmax and N, making an angle phi. With a normal reaction, here phi is known as the angle of friction. Now, we can find the resultant by using the following relation. Also, we can find the value of angle of friction as follows. The angle of friction is found to be equal to tan inverse of coefficient of static friction. Now let us learn about cone of friction. Consider a block of weight W acted upon by a force P. The block is on the verge of motion. Let R be the resultant reaction of the limiting frictional force Fmax and the normal reaction N acting at the contact surface. The angle of friction is phi. If the direction of the applied force is changed by rotating it through 360 degrees in a plane parallel to the contact surface, the resultant R also rotates and generates a right circular cone of semicentral angle phi. This right circular cone is also called as cone of friction. The importance of cone of friction is that for static body under equilibrium, the resultant reaction force at the contact surface always lies within the cone. Whereas, for a static body on the verge of motion, the reaction force lies on the surface of the cone of friction. Angle of repose. The minimum angle of inclination of a plane with the horizontal for which a body kept on it 
will just slide down on it without application of any external force is called as the angle of repose. Consider a block of weight W resting on a rough horizontal plane. The plane is slowly tilted till the block is just on the verge of sliding down the slope. At this position, the angle of inclination of the plane is called as the angle of repose. It is denoted by the letter alpha. The angle of repose is independent of the weight of the body and depends only on the coefficient of static friction. We will now derive the relation between angle of repose, alpha, and coefficient of static friction, mu s. We will first select the axes for block as shown in the figure. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the block. Equating the summation of all forces along the x-axis and y-axis to zero, and then on simplifying further, we find that the angle of repose alpha is equal to tan inverse of coefficient of static friction mu s. But we know that the angle of friction phi is equal to tan inverse of mu s. Hence, we can say that angle of repose is equal to angle of friction. Although angle of repose and angle of friction have the same value, their meanings and applications are completely different. Let's have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. Friction is the resistance to motion of one body over another body. Friction force always acts in a direction to oppose motion. Then we learned about the different types of friction. Dry friction occurs when unlubricated surfaces of two rigid bodies are in contact under a tendency of rubbing of surfaces. Fluid friction occurs when an object moves through a fluid, meaning either a liquid or gas. Internal friction is the force resisting motion between the elements making up a solid material. Friction can also be divided into the following types on the type of contact between surfaces. Sliding friction is observed when there is a sliding contact between two surfaces. Rolling friction is defined as the opposing force that comes into play when one body is actually rolling over the surface of another. We also learned the mechanism of dry friction in detail. Using a simple experiment, we obtained a relation between the applied force and the frictional force developed. We consequently learned about static friction and kinetic friction, and then we learned about the static and kinetic coefficients of friction. Finally, we learned about the basic terms used in friction. They are angle of friction, the angle made by the resultant of the limiting frictional force F max, and the normal reaction N with the normal reaction is called as the angle of friction. If the direction of the applied force is changed by rotating it through 360 degrees in a plane parallel to the contact surface, the resultant R also rotates and generates a right circular cone of semicentral angle phi. This right circular cone is called as the cone of friction. The minimum angle of inclination of a plane with the horizontal for which a body kept on it will just slide down on it without application of any external force is called as the angle of repose.